بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم In the name of Allah the most gracious the most merciful سبحان الله الحمد لله ولا اله الا الله الله اكبر Our excellence presents ولا اله الا الله Lessons from the stories of the prophets by Mufti Ismail ibn Musa Mank. Dawud alayhi salam, part two. David, peace be upon him, part two. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين وبعد All praise is due to Allah سبحانه وتعالى Blessings and salutations upon Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم We ask Allah سبحانه وتعالى to bless his household, his companions to bless all those who have struggled and strived to bring this deen to us and to bless every single one of us Beloved brothers and sisters it brings a smile to the face when we see the faces every single day, similar faces in the crowds, and subhanallah, we are connected by the link of Iman. We are connected by the link of Shahada. We have a love between us, which is solely for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I'd like you to know that it brings happiness to the heart to see the faces that are mu'mineen, to see those who are believers who come to the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also to earn the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah accept it from us. We have read this evening powerful verses of the last Jews of the Quran with the idea of completing the Quran inshallah tomorrow. The entire recitation we would have heard it from cover to cover and we hope and pray that Allah accept it from us. Yesterday we had made mention of some of the stories of some of the prophets of Banu Israel. A question that arose we had made mention of the Tabut or the Ark of the Covenant and we said that it was lost when they battled Gaza and Asqalan and either it was taken or either it was lifted up by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When did it come back? That is a very good question. We slipped up to mention it yesterday that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instructed the Prophet to appoint a king after the request of the people and they had questioned the Prophet after he said that Saul will be the king or Talut will be the king. They said, how can he be the king? Because firstly, he doesn't have much wealth and he is not from the correct lineage. And thereafter, this Nabi made mention of the sign that Allah would send in order to confirm that he was appointed as a king. What was that sign? Here is the verse. Allah says, وَقَالَ لَهُمْ نَبِيُّهُمْ إِنَّ آيَةَ مُلْكِهِ أَنْ يَأْتِيَكُمُ التَّابُوتُ فِيهِ سَكِينَةٌ مِّنْ رَبِّكُمْ وَبَقِيَّةٌ مِّمَّا تَرَكَ آلُ مُوسَى وَآلُ هَارُونَ تَحْمِلُهُ الْمَلَائِكَةِ إِنَّ فِي ذَلِكَ لَآيَةً لَكُمْ إِن كُنْتُمْ مُؤْمِنِينَ He says the sign of his appointment as a king is the fact that Allah will send you that ark of the covenant. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will send it to you. It will come down to you. In it, there will be peace and comfort for you. There will be whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has held in it with the remnants of the progeny or the, the, the family of Musa alayhi salam and the family of Harun alayhi salatu wa salam. I told you yesterday what exactly was in that box, we don't know. All we know is it was in it, there was some form of comfort. Whenever they had it with them, they won the wars. There was some revelation that was in it as well. Some of the scripts and scrolls that were granted to Musa alayhi salatu was salam were in it. And at the same time, some other artifact, something was in it that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. And Allah says, this will be sent down to you. The angels will be holding it and they'll bring it down in front of you. And if that happens, it will be a sign for the believers and a sign of the appointment of this king over you. 
Lo and behold, that exactly happened as described by the Nabi. The angels came down and brought the Ark of the Covenant and they placed it there. These people believed and that is when they agreed that this man was the king and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala thereafter makes mention of how they were tested with the river we spoke about yesterday where the bulk of them though they were instructed not to drink they drank and so on and then the war that ensued and after that Dawood alayhi salatu was salam the young David may peace be upon him with his sling managed to kill Jalut who is known as Goliath and after that he became very famous Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him lots of strength Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him leadership Allah gave him knowledge, Allah gave him nubuwa and prophethood later on. It is important for us to know that there are many narrations doing their rounds which are incorrect. They have seeped through. And the reason why I constantly use the word Hebrew scriptures is to make it very clear to us that it is foreign to us. We have got it from Banu Israel. We've got it from the Jewish scriptures. Now, I have explained right at the beginning of the series that whenever we speak about Jewish scriptures, we believe as Muslimin that if the Quran confirms what the Jewish scriptures have, then we will believe it and accept it because the Quran has it. If the Quran rejects it, we reject it because the Quran has rejected it. And if the Quran is silent regarding matters of history that are brought to us by the Jewish or the Hebrew scriptures known as Israeliyat, in that case, we believe firmly which means we neither accept the information nor do we reject it totally. We don't actually need it. Sadly, a lot of it is blasphemous. Blasphemous meaning they begin to say that Sulaiman did this and the Prophet David committed that sin and this sin and so on. All this is blasphemy. I explained it a few days back. We as Muslimin believe that these people were the highest, the most pious, the best from the lot who were chosen by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he would not choose a sinful man to be a messenger. So that is the difference. Now sadly, you will open some of our books of history. And you find some of the historians do not make mention of the fact that this is a Hebrew narration, this is a Jewish narration, this is Israeli riwayah, and they just make mention of it and we start narrating it as folk tale to our people and people begin to think, well, that was the sin of the Nabi. Allah protect us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala safeguard us. So that was a very, very important point to raise. Some people said Talut, the king, became jealous of, the, of Dawood alayhi salam and plotted to kill him and so on. All that comes to us from a foreign source. We ask Allah to protect us and protect our books. And we ask Allah to grant us knowledge. Remember, there are certain things we don't need to know. We don't need to know. There is no point in knowing something that is inaccurate. If there is something that is shady, we can actually discount it completely and we can excuse ourselves from even knowing it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the respect of all the anbiya and all those whom he has chosen. Ameen. May Allah bless them all. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about how he gave Dawood alayhi salatu was salam scriptures. Later on, as the king died, Dawood alayhi salam was appointed as a king. Subhanallah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about it. وَشَدَدَنَا مُلْكَهُ وَآتَيْنَاهُ الْحِكْمَةَ وَفَصْلَ الْخِطَابَ We established his kingdom. So we made him a king. And we granted him prophethood. The term hikmah here is used to refer to prophethood. And we gave him sound judgment. So he was a qadi, which means he used to judge between people. And at the same time, he was a king. And at the same time, he was a nabi. And at the same time, he was a great saint. This was the prophet Dawood, David, may peace be upon him. King, nabi, great saint and judge at the same time. And together with that, Allah had granted him more power in that we explained yesterday. Ya jibalu awibi ma'ahu wa tayra wa alanna lahu al-hadid. Some of the gifts given to the Prophet Dawood when he engaged in tasbih, the trees, the mountains, the birds all engaged in tasbih with him. And the beauty of it is people used to sit and watch, subhanAllah, in, in amazement. We can hear all these creatures of Allah repeating the words of Dawood alayhi salatu was salam. Amazing. And this is why the Quran says in another place, Every single creature of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, 
engages in the praise and the tasbih of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but you O oh man do not understand and comprehend that tasbih so whether it is a tree look at what Allah says in surah ar-rahman Allahu Akbar Allah speaks about how the stars prostrate and the trees prostrate for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala clear verse we know it i'm sure we've heard it so many times have we thought of what it means so how does the tree prostrate i don't know you don't know just like if we were to take for example let's say any animal let's say a sheep if the sheep was to come here how it praises allah we don't know and how we praise allah it does not know subhanallah but we are all praising allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can you please keep quiet listen keep quiet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has granted us this tongue and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us the ability to use it in the correct manner. And this is why whilst we have it, let's keep it wet with the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are taught that this tongue is a gift of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you are not going to occupy it in the remembrance of Allah, it will occupy you in the disobedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now what we learn from the Prophet Dawood alayhi salatu wa salam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us every form of goodness and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open our doors. Allah says, He used to praise Allah. He used to engage in worship. He used to judge between people. He used to fast every second day throughout his life. And he used to engage in prayer throughout the night or a portion of the night, a fixed portion. One narration says a third of the night, every night. And yet he was the king and he was granted wealth more than anybody else at the time. And he was granted above that the power to communicate with other creatures of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And on top of that, he was a Nabi of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But look at the humbleness, look at the humility. He used to sit and meet people. He was loved by everyone. Dawood alayhi salatu was salam was loved by everyone. He was a great warrior. We forgot to mention that. He was a powerful warrior. There were so many wars that took place during the life of Dawood alayhi salatu was salam. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of how he was victorious. Shadadna mulkahu. We established his kingdom and we granted it increase. Which means he was winning all the battles. And the Ark of the Covenant was there with them. Once again, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us victory. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says he was one who was able to hold the people together. One of the reasons is he was just, very just. He used to sit and judge between people in a manner that was completely just. And this is why everyone loved him because justice will lead the rest of the people to love the one who is just. When you are not just and you favor one party or you are corrupt, tomorrow there will be others who are corrupt and they will rule against you in favor of someone else. So it continues. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us a lesson of justice. Allah makes mention of a beautiful story in the Quran which we'd like to mention this evening. Allah says, وَهَلْ أَتَاكَ نَبَأُ الْخَصْمُ إِذْ تَسَوَّرُ الْمِحْرَابِ Did the story of the two who were arguing over or the two who were disputing over a matter, did that story come to you? O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now Allah is relating the story. Before we mention the detail, Dawood alayhi salam used to pray in a mihrab. A mihrab is like a prayer room where in seclusion he used to pray. Nobody was allowed to disturb him whilst he was praying. Nobody at all. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us that when he was in this mihrab, these two people suddenly scaled the wall and they got into the mihrab. How? No one knows. Because there were guards, there was a big wall around. Nobody was allowed to enter this palace. And within the palace, there was a room. And in that room, there was a, a place of worship. And that is where Dawood alayhi salam was. As he is worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he sees two men. And he was shocked. They climbed over and they got to the mihrab. إِذْ دَخَلُوا عَلَىٰ دَاوُودَ فَفَزِعَ مِنْهُمْ قَالُوا لَا تَخَفْ خَصْمَانِ بَغَى بَعْضُنَا عَلَىٰ بَعْضُ فَحْكُمْ بَيْنَنَا بِالْحَقِّ وَلَا تُشْطِطُ 
واهدنا إلى سواء الصراط as he was slightly frightened by their appearance there because he didn't expect them they told him don't worry don't fear we are two parties who are who have a dispute amongst us we want you to judge between us with the truth and we want you not to be unfair and unjust la tushtit do not go against that which is fair and just and guide us to the straight path guide us to what is correct in this matter so he looked at them and he's listening to the matter so listen to this matter and judge for yourself let's see allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says inna hadha akhi lahu tis'un wa tis'un na'jah wa liya na'jatun wahidah faqala akfilniha wa'azzani fil khitab this was the matter this is my brother he has 99 sheep and i have this is a female sheep he has 99 sheep and I have one. We are partners. He is asking me for my one as well. And he has powerful speech. His speech has overpowered me. Now you tell us what should happen. Is it fair? 99 sheep he's got on one side. His partner has one sheep. And this partner who has 99 is saying, no, I want that one as well. Who is right and who is wrong? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. I can imagine what's in our minds. So, Dawood alayhi salatu was salam, just like we are all thinking here, he responded. He says, Qala laqad dhalamaka bi su'ali na'jatika ila ni'aji. He says, look, it is oppression. To, uh, to take one. How can he take this one and include it into his 99 to make it 100? That is oppression. He should be from amongst those who understands. You can't do that. Then he continues to make a powerful statement which we need today, every one of us. We need it so dearly today. He says, most partners oppress one another in their partnership besides those who believe in Allah and do good deeds and they are very very few let's stop there for a moment this is discouraging people from engaging in unnecessary partnership you have a partnership you need to have a big heart you need to be a person who does not love wealth number one you need to have Iman and you need to do good deeds and you need to aim for the Akhirah. That is when your partnership will work. Otherwise, the day it breaks, it will be so sore and so difficult that you may never be seeing eye to eye, yet you operated together for the last 40 years. Because that's what wealth does. That's what partnership does. This is why partnership in Islam, we should know, is a last resort. You, you really don't have wealth, you've got expertise. The other one has a lot of wealth, no expertise. He can give you the wealth and you can share 50-50 when you do all the work with the wealth that he has given you and so on. But that is necessity. Without necessity, break that partnership. Without necessity, you need to make sure go in on your own. There is more barakah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us barakah. This verse, he says, Kathiram min al khulata. Most or many of the people who are partners, they oppress one another. They take from one another. They owe one another. There is a red line that they've crossed with one another. Besides those who believe and do good deeds. And they are very, very few. Now as he uttered this, he looks around. These people have disappeared. They disappeared. They were gone. Who were they? They were angels sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to test Dawood alayhi salatu wasalam. To test him regarding what? How can you issue a decree and a verdict without listening to the other party? No matter what crossed your mind when we gave you the story from one side, you did not listen to the other side of the story. So Dawood alayhi salatu wasalam immediately, when he didn't see them, he realized. He says, Immediately he knew that Allah is testing him. So he sought forgiveness and he fell prostrate. And when we read this verse a few days ago in the Tarweeha, we also fell prostrate. We also seek Allah's forgiveness.
May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open our doors. Remember, when we fall prostrate in salah whilst we are reading the Quran, it is either because Allah asks us to fall prostrate or it is because Allah is mentioning how certain good worshippers of his in the past, they prostrated or how some of the creatures of Allah prostrated. So we will also prostrate just like them or how some people when it was told to them to prostrate, they refused to prostrate. So we put that aside and we prostrate. So these are some of the reasons why we find these prostrations. As you are reading, you put the Quran aside and you drop immediately to the ground for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are not proud and arrogant. We will worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the moral of this is no matter what, we need to listen to two sides of the story. A few days ago, I received an email from someone asking me a question. And they told me there are always three sides to a story. This side, the other side and the truth. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. Nowadays, sometimes both are telling a lie. There was a time when one is lying, one is telling the truth or dispute. But nowadays, this one is lying, that one is also lying. So it's true, the truth is somewhere in between. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a good sense of judgment. Allah says, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu in tattaqullah yaj'al lakum furqana O you who believe, if you are conscious of Allah, He will grant you a sense of judgment. He will grant you the ability to distinguish between right and wrong on condition that you are conscious of Allah and you have taqwa. May Allah make us God fearing at all times. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala thereafter says, after Dawood alayhi salatu wasalam sought forgiveness and so on, Allah says, فَغَفَرْنَا لَهُ ذَلِكْ وَإِنَّ لَهُ عِنْدَنَا لَزُلْفَى وَحُسْنَ مَآبَ Indeed, we forgave Dawood alayhi salatu wasalam. And we want to tell you, he has such a close rank to us. He is very, very close to us. We have granted him a close rank to us. And we have granted him a good abode, a good place, good status. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granted that to Dawood alayhi salatu wasalam. So he was very close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then Allah appoints him. Allah says, Ya Dawood, inna ja'alnaaka khalifatan fil ardi. O Dawood, we have appointed you a successor on the earth. فَحْكُمْ بَيْنَ النَّاسِ بِالْحَقِّ وَلَا تَتَّبِعِ الْهَوَىٰ So judge between the people with justice and do not follow your own whims and fancies. Don't follow your desire. A judge is meant to judge by listening to the truth, by seeing the evidence, not by what is in his brain. A judge in the Sharia is meant to see the evidence, not by what is in his brain. He is supposed to judge according to what is in front of him in terms of evidence. And at this point, Dawood alayhi salatu was salam, when they had jumped over and they appeared in front of him, he was surprised, astonished. We are taught in the Sharia of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, لا يقضي القاضي بين اثنين وهو غضبان. Whilst a judge is very angry, he's not allowed to judge. He must hold. He must tell the people, come back when I'm calm. When he's very hungry, he's not allowed to judge. Haram, prohibited. He must tell them, come back when I'm okay. When he is, for example, emotional, he must tell them to go away until he is fine. So any adverse condition, the judge in the Sharia is not allowed to judge. Because imagine, sometimes you're very angry. The next man that comes, you might send him to the gallows. Allah safeguard us. Execute him for nothing just because you had a problem at home. The social unrest back at home. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. And this is the, the beauty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's Sharia. And this is why the judges are meant to be the best paid people because nobody should be able to bribe them. Not at all. Whatever you want to give them, they already are earning more than that. Alhamdulillah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a wise sense of judgment with us. The difficulty is we judge, forget about being upset and angry and emotional and sending people to the gallows and destroying entire communities. Although we are supposed to be having the sense of justice within us, but we lose it because of senility. And we lose it because our brains are covered by shaitan sometimes. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. The anger, the temper, the temperament, the weather, the heat, all other adverse effects. Sometimes because we follow shaitan so much, Allah snatches away the ability to distinguish between right and wrong from us. Like I said, the verse of the Quran says, it is only if you fear Allah that you will have the correct sense of justice. So those who have no fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you can forget about their correct sense of justice. Hence you find so many innocent people languishing in our prisons. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. And the criminals get away scot-free. 
May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us justice and may He make us from those really who can, whenever we are judged for or against, it should be upon justice. Amen. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, We told him, Do not follow your whims and fancies. Because if you follow your desires, it will lead you astray. Allah says, those who follow their desires, when it comes to anything and everything, whether it is judging or whether it is following their desires in doing certain items and certain things, Allah says, they are the ones who will be losers. They are the ones who will be losers. And Allah says, because of what they have forgotten, they will be granted severe punishment. They will be granted severe punishment even in the Akhirah. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to safeguard us. That is a beautiful lesson we've learned. Then Allah says, وَوَهَبْنَا لِدَاوُودَ سُلَيْمَانِ And we gave Dawood a gift. What was the gift? His son, Sulaiman. Some people say, we are confused. How to remember who is the son and who is the father? I normally say Dawood is the D for the dad. He's the father. And Sulaiman is the S for the son. He is the son. Simple way of remembering. So Dawood and Sulaiman, you'll never forget who was the father and who was the son. So Allah says, وَوَهَبْنَا لِدَاوُودَ سُلَيْمَانِ We gave Dawood as a gift, his son Sulaiman. نِعْمَ الْعَبْدُ What an excellent worshipper. إِنَّهُ أَوَّابَ He too used to turn to us often. Allahu Akbar. Turn in repentance often. Sulaiman alayhi salam grew up. Very, very intelligent young boy. Watching his father judge, he used to sit on the side and listen. And as time passed, Allah gave him more wisdom and so on. And a few times, there is mention made of him interrupting in his father's judging and putting forward his suggestion as a young boy. Let's make mention of some of this because it is correct. Authentic narration in Sahih. Authentic narration, Rasulullah has told us that one day there were two women who had babies, little babies. And they had put their babies down and gone to do something either in the field or somewhere. And one of the babies was snatched by a wolf or a fox. And they came back to find only one. So the older woman is saying, it's my child. The younger one is saying, it's my child. What did they do? They said, let's go to Dawood. They went to Dawood alayhi salatu wasalam and told him the story. And he looked at the matter and he considered both. He probably thought that, you know, the older one let her take the child because the younger one can have another child inshallah. So he says to the older one, you can take the child and the younger one, you know, it's not your child and let the older one take the child. And Sulaiman alayhi salam, young boy sitting there, he says, oh my father, I have an opinion. The father says, yes, my son. Imagine with us, we would get very upset. I have my son fiddling here on the right side and it's, it's irritating me. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. <laughs> so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, in fact, we are taught by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa He says, yes, my son, what is it? Speak to me, tell me. So he says, look, now both of the women are listening. Dad, let's bring a knife. We cut this child in half, give half to her and half to this one. That's it. So now the two of them look at each other. Dawood alayhi salatu was salam is trying to agree with his son. And as he's trying to agree with the son, the little one says, no, not at all. No ways. We want to have mercy on this child. Never mind. No problem. Give the child to the older one. Whereas the older one was just silent looking at the child. So... Sulaiman alayhi salam says, Dad, don't you think that this child belongs to the younger one? She has more mercy over the child than the older one. The older one was more or less prepared to let her go in half. And the younger one says, no, give it away. We have mercy. So Dawood alayhi salatu wasalam ruled that that child go to the younger one. Subhanallah. And he benefited from his son. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us children whom we can benefit from as well. And may Allah grant us children who can correct us in a beautiful manner. And may He make us from those who do not get irritated with our own children. <laughs> Amin. Amin. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then there is another beautiful story also mentioned in the Quran. Beautiful story mentioned in the Quran. Allah says, regarding the two people who had come in. Two people came in 
and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about how they disputed a certain matter to Sulaiman alayhi salatu wa salam. وَدَاوُودَ وَسُلَيْمَانَ إِذْ يَحْكُمَانِ فِي الْحَرْثِ إِذْ نَفَشَتْ فِيهِ غَنَمُ الْقَوْمِ وَكُنَّا لِحُكْمِهِمْ شَاهِدِينَ Allah says there was an issue which came in front of Dawood and Sulaiman alayhi salatu wa salam alayhi salam and it was regarding the flock of one person and the crop of the other. The flock of one man grazed on the land of the other where he had a great plantation and it ate all the plantation and so the two of them came the one says my plantation is gone it's eaten by the flock of this man so what should happen Dawood alayhi salatu was salam is giving the ruling and Allah says we were watching meaning Allah is watching and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says Sulaiman." we gave its understanding to the son Sulaiman. so the ruling of Dawood was that very simple your crop is gone this man's sheep have eaten your crop or his flock have eaten your crop so let him take the flock and you go away with nothing because your flock is to blame he asked him a question is it true that your flock was responsible he says yes my flock was responsible in that case give your flock to him and you people can go away the son says oh my father i have something to say Sulaiman, allah gave him wisdom he was very very wise he said, if that is what happened, then give that man the flock and give the other man the farm and let him look after the farm until it gets to a point where it was before the flock ate the crop. And in the interim, this man can benefit from that man's flock by having the milk and by having the wool and at the same time by benefiting from any resultant offspring whilst it's in his care he will look after the flock and benefit when the crop is back at its place this man returns the flock to the owner original owner and that man will come back to this one and give him all his land again with the crop exactly where it was subhanallah look at how deep this statement is we have to sit and think about what exactly was said here and it is so miraculous. What a judgment. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us sound judgment. How fair, how just. Because if it was given to one, the one would have lost everything. And yet the other one would have had his farm. And on top of that, a flock. So here this was completely fair. This was another one mentioned in the Quran. Allah says, فَفَهَّمْنَاهَا سُلَيْمَانٍ وَكُلًّا آتَيْنَا حُكْمًا وَعِلْمًا We granted the understanding of this one here to Sulaiman alayhi salam. And both of them, we gave them kingdom. And we gave them knowledge. We gave them nubuwa. And we also gave them kingdom. They were kings and prophets at the same time. And Allah says, وَسَخَّرْنَا مَعَ دَاوُودَ الْجِبَالَ يُسَبِّحْنَ وَالطَّيْرَ وَكُنَّا فَاعِلِينَ And Dawood alayhi salam, Allah mentions yet again in another place in the Quran here that we made the mountains and the trees and other creatures engage in tasbih whenever he engaged in tasbih. Amazing. And Allah says, وَأَلَنَّا لَهُ الْحَدِيدِ We spoke about it yesterday, how the metal was made soft for him, very soft. So he was the one who used to make all the armor and so on. And they used to win all the time. He developed a certain armor that was the best of the time. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granted him victory after victory. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of something very, very interesting again as well. Dawood alayhi salatu was salam, it is reported that he had a castle where his wives were and around that castle there was a wall he used to ensure that nobody came into there he was very possessive over his wives very possessive no man would come near no one so one day there was a man in the courtyard these wives noticed a man in the courtyard and they told they said to themselves if Dawood alayhi salatu was salam has to get to know of this man he will be dealt with severely. So Dawood alayhi salatu was salam calls the man and asks him, Who are you? He says, I am the one who nobody can stop. You can have a wall, you can have a castle, you can do what you want, cannot stop me. Immediately he knew this is the angel of death. The angel of death, because that is the only one 
He can come to you wherever you are. Absolutely anywhere. Nothing can stop him. Besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Dawood alayhi salatu was salam then welcomed him. Now imagine, he's now welcoming him. This man who had power, he had authority. He had so much kingdom. He had lots and lots of items that nobody can imagine whilst we're seated here. He controlled so much people and some creatures of Allah used to obey his instructions. He had one of the most powerful armies at the time and he's ready to go. Because he used to engage in ibadah. He was a person whom his wealth, his power, his, his authority never ever made him forget the fact that he has to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. At night he was alone with Allah, crying, crying. And during the day he was fasting. Every second day, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tells us the best fast is that of Dawood alayhi salatu wa sallam. He used to fast every second day. And he used to stand a third of the night every night in prayer. And imagine what he had. This reminds us, what do we have? We don't even have a fraction. The richest from amongst us doesn't even have one millionth of what Dawood alayhi salatu was salam has had. I mean, if we want to talk to the wall, people will take us to the mad hospital. We don't even have that. And yet, we find ourselves lazy to read salah, lazy to fast, lazy to read the Quran, lazy to engage in any act of worship, and then we want to cling to dear life with all fours. Allahu Akbar. We would love life if someone told you, brother, I will show you a medication that will increase your life by a few years. I think it would be sold out within minutes. It's a fact. Because we all want dear life. Here is this man so humble, loved by his people because of justice. He was ready to go because he did not allow the dunya and this world to make him forget where he came from and where he is heading. This is the Prophet Dawood alayhi salatu was salam. Thereafter, he tells the angel, you can take my soul. And it is reported that the angel took the soul of Dawood alayhi salatu was salam. And thereafter, we find, subhana rabbi al-a'la, it is reported that in his janazah, to carry his body to the grave, there were tens of thousands of people. And not only that, the birds came as well. And when the birds came, Sulaiman alayhi salatu was salam instructed them. Now this is the son. This was one of his first instructions to the birds. Why did he have to instruct them? It is reported it was a very very hot day. Very hot day. There were no clouds. No wind. And the sun was shining. As though entire creation was in mourning. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has gifted Sulaiman alayhi salatu was salam. What he did, he told the birds, to create a barrier between the people and the sun. So they were just hovering in a huge flock, hovering above. And they created shade for those who were burying the Prophet Dawood alayhi salatu was salam. And that is when the Prophet Sulaiman alayhi salatu was salam was recognized as the one. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَوَارِثَ سُلَيْمَانُ دَاوُودَ Indeed, Sulaiman inherited Dawood in two things. In his kingdom, as well as in prophethood, which means he got exactly what his father was holding. It was given to the son. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open our doors. Let's remember, whenever we worship Allah, whenever we struggle for the path of, in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to, ple to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his pleasure, we will always find that Allah will choose from amongst our offspring those who will tread the same path. And I'm sure in our midst, we have people in one field, their children join them more or less. A few of their children will join them in the field. So you have a doctor, his son is a doctor, grandson a doctor. I think after three, four generations, they start becoming plumbers and so on. <laughs> but there, sometimes you have a plumber and you have the son is a plumber and the son is one of the biggest, most famous plumbers you could ever have. After that, they become doctors maybe. <laughs> no, we had to balance it so we don't offend anyone, inshallah. And the same would apply if we are to serve the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala correctly. Every day you're reading the Quran aloud in your home in the morning, your children will come around you. No sooner do you open your eye than you will notice your children are also holding the Quran right next to you. You read your salah every single day. You find your one-year-old child who doesn't understand how to communicate with you in sujood next to you. Wallahi, it's a fact. I'm sure we've seen it. Why? This shows us the power, the power 
of being a role model by action, not even by words. We need to behave in a specific manner, proper role model. There is no point in telling your child, dress appropriately, and you yourself are semi-naked. If you were to dress in hijab, your child at the age of two and three will say, I want to wear what you got, mommy. Fact, isn't it? I'm sure we've seen it. You put on something on your head, from a young age, the child will want to put on the same thing. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us people who are living examples for our children. Remember the most powerful way of bringing up a child is just to lead by example. That's the most powerful way. And keep them within the environment that you love them to be in. Because sometimes, and it's important we say this, we have a perfect environment in the home. But when they go to the school, the environment is so bad that they lose all the values that they learned within the house. They lose all the values that they learned within the house because they are now contaminated with so many different things and they lead a double life. So it's important for us to choose the schools carefully. And it's important for us sometimes we might have to make a decision to school them at home. Some people have done that. Depending where you live and what you have around you and the choices you have and so on, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for us. I think I've said a lot regarding the Prophet Dawood alayhi salatu wasalam and his son Sulaiman alayhi salatu wasalam. We have further details of that son tomorrow when we will see how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had given him even more than his own father. Sulaiman alayhi salam made a dua to Allah that we need to understand. It was such a powerful dua. Inshallah, we will see that dua tomorrow. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us goodness until we meet then. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad. Subhanallah bihamdihi, subhanakallahumma bihamdik. Nashhadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa natubu.